Let's begin with the first section of our lecture, adenoidectomy. And in this section, we will discuss what is adenoidectomy. What are the indications for performing adenoidectomy? What are some contraindications? Contra means against, and indication is uh, so conditions which are against the indications or conditions in which we can, should not be performing adenoidectomy. And also we will talk about what type of anesthesia is used for the procedure and what should be the position of the patient during the procedure. So that all will be discussed in the first section of our lecture. Adenoidectomy. Ectomy is the removal and adenoidectomy is the removal of the adenoids. So surgical removal of the adenoids for which, for reasons which include impaired breathing through the nose, chronic infections or recurrent ear aches. That's the adenoid tissue. Adenoid is a, a lymphatic tissue like the tonsils and it's present in the upper part of the throat behind the nasal cavity or behind the nose here. If you see, that's the location of the adenoids. And as a result of this location, once the adenoids become enlarged or they swell up, uh, it cause problem in the uh, breathing. And the other important complication as a result of swelling of the adenoid tissue is uh, it can cause uh, obstruction of the eustachian tube, which is uh, the tube between the middle ear and the throat to keep or to maintain the air pressure. And then when that is blocked, it can cause complications also. So the adenoids a tissue is the tissue which is present in the upper part of the throat behind the nose and it is removal of this adenoid tissue is known as adenoidectomy and can cause problem in the breathing and uh, chronic infections and earaches. So that's the adenoid tissue. And adenoid tissue is a lymphatic tissue. Usually it is it performs its function by the age of five years. And after five years, it slowly shrinks or regress because a lot of other tissues uh, start performing their function. So in children up to five years of the age, this adenoid tissue is important lymphatic tissue and it can protect against different infections, fight against germs, and cause protection. Indicated alone or in combination with tonsillectomy. Tonsils are other lymphatic tissues present and the tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy usually can be performed together. So when tonsillectomy is performed, adenoids are also removed. Uh, and the both are important lymphatic tissues protect against different infections. But children or people who have recurrent episodes of infections or they have a, a swelling of tonsils and the adenoid tissue, these two structures need to be removed uh, because uh, it doesn't cause too much problem for with the removal because there are other uh, different organs in the body that perform the function. So can be alone or in combination with removal of tonsils, tonsillectomy. Adenoids are removed first. Nasopharynx packed before starting tonsillectomy. So adenoids, when the both procedures are performed, tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy, First, adenoids are removed and because the uh, for the tonsillectomy, the nasopharynx needs to be packed. So uh, it's uh, always adenoids are removed first than the tonsils. Indications of adenoidectomy, hypertrophy of adenoids causing problems like uh, obstruction of breathing. Uh, 
uh, if there is snoring, mouth breathing, sleep apnea syndrome, speech abnormality, rhinolalia clausa. So very, very important indications for adenoidectomy if they are enlarged and they are causing the patient to snore, they breathe from the mouth, sleep apnea syndrome, uh, speech abnormality, all this can be uh, an indication for adenoidectomy. Recurrent rhinosinusitis, chronic otitis media with effusion associated with adenoid hyperplasia, recurrent ear discharge in B9, uh, S CSOM uh, associated with adenoiditis, adenoid hyperplasia, dental malocclusion. So all these are the indications for adenoidectomy if there is recurrent infection, if there is a dental malocclusion, if there is a discharge from the ear, if there is a chronic otitis media. So this is all. Uh, we have chronic suppurative otitis media again. All these are indications that leads to the uh, adenoidectomy. Now some contraindications, what are some conditions in which adenoids should not be removed? Uh, cleft palate or submucous palate. Here if there is cleft, cleft palate, cleft palate, that's the contraindication for performing adenoidectomy. Hemorrhagic diathesis, if there are bleeding disorder, hemorrhagic diathesis, then the uh, adenoidectomy should not be performed. Acute infection of uh, res upper respiratory tract. Once the infection is healed and patient is better, then we can go for adenoidectomy. But in acute infection, that is contraindication for adenoidectomy. Anesthesia, which is used general with the oral endotracheal intubation. Uh, so general anesthesia is preferred for performing adenoidectomy. Position of the patient, if you remember, that's the position is the uh, same position used for tonsillectomy. So patient is supine. Supine is the position. Patient is on the back with the head elevated and uh, hyperextension uh, uh, of the neck should be avoided, can cause injury to the cervical spine, but uh, that's the position of the uh, uh, adenoid so it's the same as for tonsillectomy. Hyper of extension of the neck is avoided. Flexion is the bending. Extension is straightening. Hyper extension is for straightening. So the bending back of the neck should be avoided because that can cause damage to the cervical spine or the injuries can occur. So that's the position for uh, adenoidectomy. So adenoidectomy, if we summarize it, it's the, uh, it's the procedure required for the removal of adenoids. Adenoids are the tissue present in the neck, on the upper part of the neck, behind the nostrils. And when the, as a result of the location of these adenoids, it's very clear that any hypertrophy or enlargement of these adenoids can cause obstruction to the breathing. The breathing will be affected. It will cause pressure on the eustachian cube, cause blocking of the eustachian tube. There is fullness of the ear, feeling of fullness. The sound is affected. 
the, the it can cause recurrent episode of infections in the middle ear uh, and then it all these problems can occur so it's uh, once it is causing too much problem too much missing of the school and too much uh, sickness uh, then it needs to be removed because it is anyway it shrinks after five years of age and other uh, lymphatic tissues can perform the form, form function and then usually it is uh, adenoidectomy is performed along with tonsillectomy and in that case adenoids are removed first because the nasopharyngeal pack are applied after tonsillectomy both procedures leave the raw area in the uh, 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 in the raw areas no stitches are performed usually it takes time and it's a fast procedure doesn't take very long usually the patient is discharged soon so all these and then the anesthesia that is used for adenoidectomy is the general anesthesia and the position is the same as for the tonsillectomy which is supine position patient is on the back with the face upward uh, head is supported by the cushion underneath and then the hyper extension of the neck should be avoided because that can cause injury to the cervical spine. So all these very important procedures to or the steps to remember as far as adenoidectomy is concerned. So that was all about section one. Thank you for watching scardia.com.